Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back to NPTEL MOOCs course on developing soft skills and personality. I am Ravi Chandran from IIT Kanpur, I am giving you this course for the past 2 weeks and then we are already on module 4 and lecture number 10. Uh, this week particularly I have been focusing more on conflict resolution skills, you might be wondering why. In the last week if you looked at it, I was using one lecture for one concept, but this is one concept and I have brought it up to 4 lectures and then this is the last lecture in fact that I am going to conclude about conflict resolution skills. But then if you wonder why I am spending this much time, you should note that this is one skill if developed well, conflict resolution skill can make you very highly demanded not only in the professional circle but also in the personal circle. People will come to you, they will look forward to you whenever there is a conflict, they would like you to come and resolve their conflicts and uh, by resolving their conflicts, you are also maintaining a harmonious relationships with those people and then you are also strengthening and building up your personality. So, this is one skill that everybody is looking for in a person and it determines your level of uh, personality, whether you are a good leader or not, whether you are a uh, overall good person who can use this to uh, excel yourself, everything is determined by this. That is the reason why I have been spending so much time on this. So, in this unit let us look at some of the types of conflicts and uh, some of the types in which they try to resolve the conflicts. Now, before we go as I do every time, let us look at some quick highlights of what we did in the last lecture. We discussed some solutions to two conflicts at interpersonal level, uh, one was between a father and son, other was between a, a couple who were uh, married out of love, but then were about to reach the point of break that, uh, that is divorce. Now, I try to tell you that you should be looking at both sides, but at the same time you should be able to give contingency to the third side also. And I also highlighted that you should keep in your mind what Betton Russell mentioned in his very famous essay, Knowledge and Wisdom, about the way uh, he will try to instill wisdom in people, especially in interpersonal conflicts by uh, making each other write the merits, particularly demerits if they hate each other and then try to exchange the notes with the persons. So, I suggested in a different manner as how you can use it in interpersonal relationships and then try to instill not only in those people, also in your own uh, mind. Now, apart from this, are there other simple ways in which we can resolve conflicts? Now, there are other simple ways uh, like uh, if you emphasize need, if you tell people that you actually need this instead of fighting or demanding for a solution from those people, uh, instead of telling them that you give me this solution, if you say that this is what I need, if you emphasize your need instead of putting people in a conflict. So, most of the times people tend to help you to give you that kind of need or facilitate that the need is uh, satisfied. Now, look at some examples which I consider as other simple ways of resolving conflicts. Now, this side if somebody is demanding solution, let us say this is a scenario between a sister and a brother. So, this sister, uh, the scenario is that uh, her uh, uh, brother is playing music loudly and dancing with his friends, maybe in the adjacent room and then it is uh, troubling her so much. So, she comes and then she has lost her patience and then she shouts at them and she says, monkeys can't you go out and jump and babble on trees? I need a peaceful atmosphere. Now, brother obviously says, you goose, we are just freaking out. Can't you see? You can find a peaceful place yourself. Now, the same scenario can be changed if the sister actually emphasized her need and then made the other parties understand why they should retain calmness for her. Look at the other way in which it could be changed. The sister goes and then says, hi guys and then says, nice music. 
but however or yet I need a quiet atmosphere because I am preparing for my exam tomorrow. Okay. Just telling them the need okay. and then the brother and uh, uh, his friends, so most likely they are likely to say this, we will leave soon and you can work in peace. Okay, just we are winding up, we are just concluding. Now, the what, what changed the scenario? In the previous one, she did not tell them what is her need and then she put her anger first and then she burst out and then she just made them react quickly to the way she burst out with emotion. In the other one, she controlled her emotion and then she tried to make them realize that, okay, you are enjoying music, fine, but my need is this. So, she actually gave them a chance to help her fulfill her need. In most of the scenario, if you are able to put emphasis on need, but not on demanding a solution, things will work out. Look at another situation between husband and wife, wife to her husband. I like it calm, can't you switch off the TV and do something meaningful? Now, husband, but my favorite program is going on it will take time, why do not you go upstairs? Now, here she demanded a solution that he should do something meaning, meaningful other than watching the TV. Now, in terms of emphasizing need, look at the way the same scenario can be changed. Wife says, to do my yoga, I need a calm place. Maybe she adds uh, deer or honey and then says this. Now, husband can give one of the following reactions if the need is emphasized. He can say simply, okay dear, I will switch off the TV and read that novel, okay, I leave you at peace. Second, he can say, okay, I will use the Bluetooth headphone so that again the room will remain calm, but I just listen, it is a kind of uh, win-win. The third one, he says, I will just uh, leave for my jogging now, so that is also possible. Fourth one, he says, never mind. I can watch the program on the internet later, I am just closing it for you. Now, all are possible provided you emphasize the need. Okay. So, without uh, trying other aspects of uh, conflict resolutions. Now, what kind of conflicts generally we face in our life? How, how can we look at them? Now, there are uh, like uh, about 6, 8 ways people look into conflicts, but I would say that you can bring all of them into four categories. Okay. The innermost one is the intrapersonal, that is the conflict that happens within. I am going to explain this soon, but it is between me and myself, I and me, okay, there is conflict. Interpersonal, I with somebody, some other person, so I with my friends, I with my enemies. I with my boss, I with my colleagues and so on, interpersonal. Intra groups, that is group and within a group. So, one uh, group of people, but within the group there are fractions, there are differences of opinion leading to conflicts. Inter groups, as in uh, different kind of uh, corporate environment where two companies are fighting with each other, Samsung and Apple. Okay. or even small companies, the local ones, two shops which are opposite to each other and then they are fighting for their uh, clients. So, this is intergroups between two groups. Now, intra is within the same group, interpersonal is between two uh, personal uh, relations, intrapersonal is within oneself. Now, you might be asking like which one is the toughest kind of uh, battle that we need to win. Needless to say that the toughest conflict resolution skills are needed for dealing with intrapersonal ones, that is the conflicts which are happening within. From the time you get up till you go to sleep, there are so many intra conflicts. Look at uh, some of the uh, ones that you have in mind, often it leaves you with a psychological dilemma whether or not to do a thing. So, it is there in the mind, should you do that or not, you keep asking this. Look at uh, some of the examples that I have put, to get up or not to get up. To get up after the alarm rings or just stop it and then sleep for some more time. To get up at this time or not to get up. 
after getting up to brush your teeth or not to before having a cup of tea or not to brush that day at all because you want to save more time on sleeping to go for a morning walk or not. These are conflicts that you need to resolve to talk to someone or not to take bath or not especially uh, during winter. So, to take bath or not should I do that or not to complete that long pending work or not to stop procrastination or not okay. should I keep on procrastination or should I stop it to give up laziness or not. In fact, I tell you that this is the toughest fight that you need to uh, resolve especially if you want to develop your personality and then reach that level of excellence that David McClelland and then Maslow are talking about. If you want to reach that level, you actually need to give up your laziness at some point or other I, I, as the cross is uh, progressing, you decide that you will stop it. I hope most of you have uh, uh, given up laziness by this time and then even questions like to become successful or not. Some people are really afraid of success, some people are afraid of fame, some people especially uh, think that oh if I become famous I will be surrounded by so many people. So, I will I'll have no time for myself. So, let me not become famous, let me not become successful. And then uh, the final question about one's own self to become a self actualized individual or not. I have been telling you that become the self actualized individual only then you will have real inner happiness, but then still you will be doubting yourself should I do that or not and if I have to do then I have to do lot of things. So, should I be really doing that and even questions simple questions like should I continue with this course or not. So, these are thoughts that come to you in the form of conflicts and then every time you are fighting with them and you are trying to resolve them and then sometimes it becomes so philosophic, so big as like you could see in the character of uh, Shakespeare's Hamlet, uh, the famous uh, phrase to be or not to be that is the question he says that is the ultimate form of psychological conflict whether to live or not to live in the kind of uh, struggles that uh, he is surrounded with. Now, uh, why do people see conflicts in a negative frame, negative perspective and should you see conflicts in a negative one? Obviously, you know that I, I would say no and I want you to look at conflicts from a very uh, positive point of uh, view and uh, why people look at it and why do you look at it that way and why should not you look at it that way. Anger first of all if you look at it we do not want anybody to get angry, we do not like somebody's face when they are angry, smile you know increases the face value, but then anger when you see somebody it is the like the most ugliest form of face they will have when they are angry. Now, when a person gets angry he or she intimidates others especially if you are in an emotional network and when you see the person getting angry all others are put off ok. They do not want to even say something they are afraid. Now, in family setup let us see an angry father threatens to beat the mother. Now, children become very anxious. So, they become psychologically repressed they are not even able to express their views. Should they go and defend the mother? Should they go and fight with the father? But then even his uh, uh, presence and shouting and showing anger it intimidates people. Now, other people are uh, rather uh, uh, afraid because they sort of perceive conflicts as kind of psychological threats, some kind of threatening situation they think that every time a conflict arises. So, they try to avoid it and then people generally do not like disagreements. How many times you have actually liked a person who kept on disagreeing with you, who kept on arguing with you? So, usually people will lose their love and affection to those who keep disagreeing with them constantly and they will either avoid those people or turn hostile after some time. Sometimes they will completely stop those people who disagree with the others. So, disagreement is fine, but then after disagreement there should be a 
gentle agreement and the uh, restoring of the harmony that is there in the relationship. But if disagreement per se, somebody is doing it, so then it is not advisable and that is another reason why people think that whenever there is a conflict, it is a disagreement and then uh, we should not be liking it. So, this is general perception of conflict and it is quite valid also, but as a participant of this course who is trying to develop his or her personality and then use this to change your entire inner core, I would say that look at conflict as something positive instead of looking at conflict as something negative. Now, how can you look at uh, uh, conflict as a positive thing? First understand that a well resolved conflict has the potential to bring out productive results, whether it is in a company setup, whether it is in a job environment or even in a family setup that is working as a team, the results will be productive. It will be highly productive if it is a win win situation. Conflicts can be used positively for clarifying. So, clarifying miscommunication, clarifying misunderstanding and if you are the proactive kind of person you will learn from that and you will not only learn from that and then you will also pay way for promoting a stimulating uh, environment. So, communication channels will be open when you are able to clarify, learn from that and then you are able to stimulate a very positive communicative environment. It can help in strengthening relationships. So, at the end of a conflict like last time we discussed, it will always lead to a strengthening of relationship and it can foster intimate bonds. You can never say that uh, uh, these people are living a very uh, happy and deeply understanding uh, life and relationship, but they never quarreled in their life at all. No. It is the people who quarrel frequently, it is the people who are in conflict with each other frequently and they resolve it. If they leave it unresolved, it can go to any uh, damaging situation like divorce or even uh, committing suicide or all kind of uh, uh, violent and uh, damaging activities. But on the other hand, if they are able to help each other to resolve the conflicts, even though it appears that they are deliberating creating conflicts, but at the end of it, it will foster intimate bonds. At a personal level, when you are able to resolve some conflict, you can emerge courageous. In a workplace, creative solutions can be arrived at. Most of the times, when you use brainstorming in a workplace, you will come out with many interesting ideas, out of the box thinking, but which never came until the uh, conflicts uh, became a kind of source for sitting together in the name of fighting, but in the, in the name of fighting, you actually came out with new innovative solutions. In intra interpersonal conflicts, it can be helpful in enriching and developing new ties and friendships. In intra group conflicts, the group becomes more caring and inclusive. Uh, say for example, they uh, within the group, there is some two, three people, the group is not considering. But after the conflict, they understand those three for better and then they become more caring and inclusive. Whatever they do, they start including them in their uh, activities. Overall, conflicts are opportunities for growth and overcoming hurdles towards reaching excellence. Use conflicts, resolve them and then reach excellence. Now, let us look at some types of uh, uh, conflict resolvers or what kind of uh, uh, person that you are in terms of uh, resolving a conflict. Generally, large number of people would like to avoid conflicts. So, the avoiding types, either they are shy, they are introverts or maybe simply they are just peacemakers. They do not, they always want people not to fight with each other. So, they always want to live in a kind of harmonious surroundings. So, they just avoid it they do not even want to talk about it. The other type is accommodating, uh, slightly better than avoiding, they are accommodative, they are unassertive, they do not put their viewpoints, they are cooperative, they want the conflict to be re uh, resolved first and they put relationships first, okay, because they do not want to hurt the other person who is involved in the conflict. 
The opposite type is the attacking type, the aggressive, the powerful, the dominating one who will use power sometimes to control the boss over the worker, even teacher over student, husband over wife and sometimes even wife over husband depending on the power struggle, collaborating. Now, the people who are interested in collaborating are the assertive and cooperative types, but then they seek win-win solutions. They collaborate so that they can uh, arrive at win-win solutions. Normally, this mode is advisable, but then you also have people who are in the competing mode that is win-lose mode. I will win, but you will lose. So, I will not cooperate with you because I want you to lose and by cooperating with you, my own concerns are getting abolished. So, I do not want that to happen. And then there is one more type that is the compromising type that is uh, the person is willing to give up, lose something and then even if the other person is compromising, both are in lose-lose situation, sacrificing, seeking harmony again. But then uh, in a sense that it is not going to uh, lead further growth, it is still the status quo till another conflict comes. Now, if you ask which one is the best, again it depends on the context, it depends on the person because there are occasions when it is better that even if you are not a shy and introvert person, uh, even if you are uh, the um, attacking type, it is better to avoid certain conflicts. Especially they say that uh, conflicts with boss and then if the boss is too aggressive, so there is no point in fighting with the boss. At the, as they say, the boss is always right and then uh, the second rule says that when in doubt, you go and look at the first rule. So, uh, that is happening in most of the environment where it is authoritative and where it is quite conservative. So, where it is better to avoid it. But then, uh, if, if you think that you are the attacking type, if you think that all the time you are attacking, so try sometimes uh, using accommodative type. Most of the times try to collaborate, try to arrive at a win-win situation and then if you think that you are in the competing type, that you always think that I should win and somebody should lose. So, try to change the modality, try to change the situation by changing your resolving type of conflicts. Now, all of us try to resolve the conflicts, but then keep in mind that we should try to arrive at win-win solution. We should be most of the times collaborating, we should be assertive, but at the same time cooperative and we should try to seek win-win uh, solution. Now, Towards the uh, concluding of uh, this one, this uh, particular uh, four uh, lectures on conflict, conflict resolution. So, some quick tips and suggestions that I would like to give in your day to day life as how you can uh, deal with conflicts, what should be the attitude that you should have. I would suggest that you should resolve conflicts so that you become a conflict resolution expert. How do you do that? Embrace conflicts, do not run away from conflicts, look for conflicts. So, wherever conflicts are there, you try to find out a, a kind of favorable solution to all concerned. And then whenever you look for a conflict, test your abilities to resolve them and at the end of it, try to reflect on the way that you have resolved the conflict. How did I resolve this conflict? Did I do it in an attacking manner? Did I use my power to control my kids? Did I use my emotional power to control my friends? How did I do this? Did I compete and then did I go for win-lose situation? How did you resolve the conflicts? And then did you ever collaborate and then try to reach this win-win situation? Then once you try to master your level of conflict resolution, try to help your friends and colleagues, like uh, let people know you as a person who is excelling in conflict resolution, try to develop that skill. And then even in unknown situations, like when you are walking on a road or there is a quarrel in neighborhood, quarrel on the street and then uh, boss has some problem with somebody, you just offer to talk to the concerned people and then ask and then uh, find out whether you can resolve the conflict on their behalf. So, what I mean to say is gently interfere even in unknown situations. Do not just 
become a passive observer and run away from that. Even if there is a conflict which is also combined with fight, people are fighting with each other. Even if you go and then try to talk in a polite manner, people are not going to beat you most of the times. So, you can take a risk and then see how your resolution is trying to work out and go back to the previous lesson, use some of the general process and methods which I have been told to you like get the facts first, use empathy, listen to both sides and then give contingency to the third side and all that. With that, you will be able to resolve that. And remember all the time that you can use conflicts as opportunities to develop your personality and strengthen human relationships. So, uh, with this I conclude the uh, lectures on conflict resolution. I hope you enjoyed these lectures, but more than enjoying, I wish that you learn how to resolve conflicts in your life. If you are, if you are always using somebody to uh, take help for resolving your conflicts, stop that and then try to develop the inner ability in you to resolve conflicts. Believe in you, believe all the time that you can go for a win-win situation and most importantly as I was telling you, use the conflicts which are within to develop your personality. The toughest thing to uh, resolve is actually the conflicts which are within, the intrapersonal conflicts. Now, there are more uh, uh, things with regard to intrapersonal conflicts uh, such as like uh, managing time, managing hygiene, managing workplace, managing even uh, uh, for example, uh, certain habits that you have uh, accumulated and made them as bad and then how to overcome some of these things, how to avoid stress. Now, all are related to this, some of which we will also in a phased manner look at uh, in this course, but now that I am just trying to give you tips and then try to train you as a kind of expert, try to resolve it at your own level also. Thank you so much for uh, watching this video, I will get back with a new lesson in the next video.